Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Terry Lynn here with you tonight on University of Acadia information call. Let me see if we have Frank here with us. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are, Frank. Hello. Yes, hi. Very well. Good. Good. Are you uh, ready to get things going for tonight? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, let me uh, do a quick introduction. Hello, everyone. We have Frank O'Collins here with us tonight uh, from Australia, and uh, he's going to be teaching us some more about what's going on with Eucadia, some updates, and uh, uh, we'll open it up for questions. Frank, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks very much, Jerry. Um, Thank you, and thank all who are on the call tonight. Um, I would look forward to going through a number of subjects tonight uh, over probably about an hour and 10 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is see if we can spend a bit more time on answering questions and answers. So if we can try and get uh, maybe an hour and a half in for Q&A so we can cover everyone's questions because... Uh, I, I definitely don't want to miss anyone's questions. And uh, I can just ask everyone, if you aren't muted, if you can mute yourself at least just so we don't get any any uh, interference. So the purpose of these calls, these calls are informational. They are a way of bringing all of you up to speed, those that are on the call tonight. And there is someone at the moment who's not muted. So I'll just ask if you can please, everyone, if you aren't muted, please mute. Uh, so we don't get any any interference. But the purpose of these calls tie in very much to the information that we're sharing through the site uh, one-heaven.org on ecclesiastical deeds, on this being a a perfected claim of right, on helping people uh, who are facing foreclosures, who are facing prison, who are facing IRS, who are facing family issues. Also, in the help that we're providing in terms of updates on court. Uh, There's a section there, how to succeed in court. It's also a a way of uh, updating information that's coming through on the UKD website. And the uh, university website, of course, is uh, uh, university.ukadia.info. That's HTTP, so on, uh, university.ukadia.info. So uh, with that in mind, Um, There are several subjects that I want to be able to cover on the call tonight. The first, given it is uh, something that is happening right now, it is a major, major issue that is being raised right now, and that is the issue of uh, gold and gold coming back as the underwriting for new currencies, the plan, the deliberate plan to collapse major currencies in the world, including the US dollar, this year and the significance of that. I want to then cover some updates in terms of work that we've been doing on foreclosures and the contesting of title as well as eliminating the argument of delinquency. I want to discuss some updates to the ecclesiastical deed poll process as well as next steps. I want to cover with you all updates to the court articles that uh, have been uh, continuing to be updated. I also want to share with you some of the updates on the Great Divine Writ process and some important updates on that. And then I want to cover some feedback and some further research on the EIN registration process, which I know a number of you have been quite frustrated by. And tying into that frustration, of course, the obtaining of uh, trust accounts, in particular special deposit accounts. And I want to talk to you about tonight some uh, alternatives, some potential alternatives. So there's a few things to cover there. I mean, gold, lawful money, foreclosures, uh, stopping delinquency, updates to EDP, updates to court articles, great divine writs, EINs, trust account numbers. So there's quite a bit to cover before we get into Q&A and answering your questions. So let me begin by this issue of, of 
exactly what the parasites, the false Menashe, the Ashkenazi, uh, Khazarian, Venetian families are planning to do this year in the deliberate collapse of the US dollar, of the euro, and in the reconstitution of their control in the bringing back of quote unquote lawful money. Now I know over the last, and in particular over the last six years, as many brilliant researchers have uncovered the truth in the way in which fiat money is created out of thin air, that there has been an increasing movement to looking to an alternative. And in particular, there has seemed to be an increasing interest, albeit with very cloaked individuals, that there appears to be some benevolent forces who are receptive to that. Now, it has come to a head this year, 2011, where no longer are we talking in riddles about quote-unquote benevolent forces wanting to restore to a quote-unquote lawful money system backed by gold. It is now on the record categorically and unequivocally in the House of Lords in England that a phenomenal amount of gold of historic proportions has suddenly appeared out of thin air in the guise of Foundation X and a number of verified other sources of smaller amounts that have all stated that they wish to underwrite new lawful currency, whether it be coming from China or coming from other sources. Now, I know that anyone that has studied in the truth movement, the theft of our energy uh, is looking for remedy, is looking for alternatives, and sensibly should not dismiss anything. However, our knowledge and our sharing of history of gold has not been clear until this point. So tonight, I want to share some absolute facts about gold with those that are on the call and those that may be listening later so we can be under no illusion who these forces are, what they are proposing, why they have come at this time, and what it ultimately means. Because I trust all who listen to this call, uh, all who will be listening to this call, uh, are honest uh, in their belief and hope that whatever we do, it is for improvement and not for sustaining the existing system and giving them a way out. So to that end, I'm going to ask you to have a look at a particular link, which I, I must thank a number of people who have already sent out already, but this link is on the home page of this site, one, O-N-E hyphen evil.org. That is HTTP one hyphen evil.org. When you get to that home page, I'll explain to you the link that I, I want you to have a look at. The link I want you to have a look at once you get to one hyphen evil.org, O-N-E hyphen evil.org, is under evil rituals, and it is the first link. It's a link that says, gold equals cursed prison of salts. A provocative statement, but I'll explain it now. So when you get to that home page, click on that link, gold equals cursed prison of souls under evil rituals on the home page of one one hyphen evil.org. Now, I'm going to read through some of this now, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's a, it's a relatively lengthy article, but I'm going to read some of it because there are elements in here that we haven't, I feel, fully explored in terms of the history of gold and the otherwise quite dark history of gold, not as a saviour, but as a, a cursed material. So I'm going to read the first two paragraphs and then we'll, we'll, we'll get through. So uh, please bear with me. Gold, the god of Roman Kaisers, in opposition to the divine creator, as referenced in the New Testament, as the statement was said, one cannot serve two masters. 
if one believes in Christianity, then one believes that there are words spoken by Yeshua, Jesus, and one of the most important passages, you can't worship gold and you can't worship God at the same time. You have to make a choice. They're not the same thing. The false god of the Israelites, the golden calf, in opposition to Yah, and anyone that's read the Bible knows of the golden calf. The golden calf was not the worship of Yah, Yahweh, Yahweh. It was the worship of Baal. More importantly, the worship of gold itself. The false god of the Menashe in opposition to Sabaoth. And the ultimate G meaning of Freemasonry. The cursed medium into which the salvage souls by the banks and courts, a system set up by the Jesuits in the 1540s, condemn our spirits since 1543. The wrecker of civilizations and the cause of great depressions as lawful money, the medium of spells and madness. This is gold. This is what gold is today. No other medium has caused so much suffering, so much war or grief. No other medium or material has been associated with so many curses. No other object has been proven to be the very worst material for underwriting lawful money through indisputable evidence of its use by bankers and merchants to beguile, usurp and collapse empires. Yet, despite all these warnings, including more scriptural warnings in any other substance across more face than any other material, gold remains a substance worshipped by hundreds of millions, particularly Christians, in absolute contradiction and defiance to their faith. You do not need gold to underwrite your currency. The very best medium to underwrite a currency is the same thing that the private guilds steal from us every single day. It's our energy that is the very best medium to underwrite a currency, not gold. It is our spirit that's the very best medium. Or the spirit of our ancestors, which is the essence of supreme credits and the currency system already constructed and ready to go under one heaven and Ukadia, all ready to go. Structured, ready, but still, in spite of everything we've done, the bankers will not yield. They still want to destroy the world again. The utter madness of the parasite mind. Well, how do we get to this and how do we prove these comments and, and what does it mean in terms of where we step forward? So let's go through this a bit more. Let's start with the origin of gold. I don't know why it's not covered before. It is covered in different texts, but they don't get to the heart of it. When did gold become supernatural? When did it become spiritual? You know, if you've read the nursery rhymes or the stories of fables um, created by our, our friends, the Ashkenazi, you've probably heard of the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow that is the guardian of the gold. And that's the key, the guardian of the gold. Why would there even be such a thing as a guardian of gold, a supernatural being? Well, you won't see this in any history book because the Menashe and the Jesuits have made sure you don't see it, but the first gold mine in the whole of Europe came from one place, Ireland. The same place that natural bronze was exported across the world and to the most famous city of the planet, that dwarfed the fame of Rome. And yet you will not see a single reference to this city either, the city of the White Rock. Any of you that have read the Bible may, not, may understand the significance of a city called the city of the White Rock, the city of the White Cliffs, the city of Ebla, a city that had a population in excess of half a million people at about 3,500 BCE. No city has dominated history so more than Ebla. And it's one of its wealthiest materials came directly from Ireland. The Tower of Babel, the centre of learning, 
was Ebla. Bronze, 